Do you bleed? You will. <laughs> Welcome to the second installment of Super Leader Saturdays. I wanted to do a little Batman prop to start this uh, teaching today. Uh, today we'll be concentrating on the difference between a hero, a leader, and a warrior. And I'm really happy you joined me because this I see that this left a mark. Hmm. Anyway, I'm happy you joined me because this is going to be a great teaching. You're going to come out of it uh, with great knowledge, good stuff, and it's going to help you make not only make the difference between the three, but also appreciate how they come together. And that's what I'm going to concentrate on today. Uh, if any of you uh, who are watching me right now did not join my group that I've created, you should really, really join right now. Uh, what the group is all about well basically it's about the book it's about these teachings that i'm doing right now i actually download the videos afterward they're edited on youtube they're much nicer they're much more fun to watch um, but also what i'll be adding in the group is stuff that's not available anywhere else you'll have some sample chapters so for those of you who are thinking about the book they're not sure if it's for them you can you're going to be able to look at the sample chapters and also, I'm working on a secret chapter that I will include in that group only for the group members. So it's a secret chapter. It's not in the book and it's going to be only available to those who join the group. So what do you do? Well, how do you join the group? Well, it's very simple. You go to Facebook slash groups, lead like a superhero. Simple as that. And uh, I will get a no notification. I will add you to that group and that's where you'll get all the good stuff, right? But today we'll be concentrating on that uh, teaching on hero, leader, and warrior. What's the difference? Well, uh, obviously there are differences. Some of you might actually have an idea already of what those differences are, and that's fine. But one thing is for sure is that when you become a leader, when you work on yourself to, uh, to become a better leader, to lead others, to lead your family, to lead, your, uh, to lead in your church, to lead in your business, uh, you will have at times, of course, you will always use the skills that are required to be a good leader, right? The leadership skills, but you will have at times to be a hero. And I'll be clearer on that as we go along. And you will have at times to also demonstrate the skills, the skill set of a warrior. So, Without any further ado, let's start with the hero part, okay? So, everybody loves a hero. Nobody hates a hero. Everybody loves a hero. It's not, I didn't say it. It was Aunt May in Spider-Man 2 by Sam Raimi. So I'm not the one who said that. That was from Aunt May. And if you disagree with Aunt May, you're not very nice, okay? So, what she said in Spider-Man 2, she, she, she really uttered a great quote. It was really touching, really amazing. Uh, Peter Parker had stopped being Spider-Man. He was disappointed with the whole trying to manage a job, a girl, a hero biz, and everything. The whole thing together was just overwhelming for him. So he had quit being a hero, and he meets his aunt in her driveway. She's she's packing away boxes, and she's putting away stuff, and. Uh, so he quit being Spider-Man. She doesn't know he's Spider-Man. And there's this little kid there. He, he's helping her. His name is Henry. And he's helping her with her boxes. And uh, I don't remember quite how the conversation goes, but it gets to a point where Aunt May starts talking about Spider-Man and where he's been. Where has he gone? And she says, she says this. I'm going to read it to you. She says, Lord knows kids like Henry need a hero. Courageous, self-sacrificing people setting examples for all of us everybody loves a hero people line up for them they cheer for them they scream their names and years later they'll tell how they stood in the rain for hours just to get a glimpse of the one who taught them to hold on for one second longer i believe there's a hero in all of us that keeps us honest gives us strength makes us noble and finally allows us to die with pride even though sometimes we have to be steady and give up the thing that we want most even our dreams spider-man did that for henry and he wonders where he's gone he needs him 
I thought that was so, I thought that was so touching. And after that little uh, little speech from Aunt May, Peter Parker was inspired to don the suit once again because he understood uh, that he was needed, but not only to save lives, not only to use his powers for the greater good, but for the inspiration that he drew in the hearts of people through his heroics. And he was reminded once again that with great power comes great responsibility. Christopher Reeve, the beloved Christopher Reeve who played Superman, who was iconic in just the way he, he personified the hero. He actually looked the part so well that everybody knew him as Superman. Uh, when he had his accident later, uh, a lot of people were heartbroken. It was a heartbreaking accident, but uh, he never stopped uh, being a hero to many because of the way he dealt with his handicap afterwards. And Christopher Reeve said this, okay? He said, a hero is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. In my book and in my opinion, Spider-Man and Superman, these are the two guys that I think that come to mind first when I think of a hero or a superhero. Uh, the reason is I believe that Spider-Man and Superman are the two most self-sacrificial heroes in the superhero realm. They're the ones who are going to put their lives on the line without even thinking twice about it. If there's an innocent person in danger, if they, if they need to, to put their lives on the line just to save one person, they're going to do it. Okay, they won't even think twice about it. But also, if there's a kitten in a tree, they're not above going to get that kitten in a tree for the little girl either. So that makes them really admirable. That, that's, that's a hero for you. So heroes are all about sacrifice for the sake of others, okay? Heroes always think of others first. They, they do it in small matters, but they also do it in very important matters where their lives are at stake or where lives are at stake and they need to intervene to save lives, right? Obviously, most of us as leaders, as, as, as wannabe leaders, as growing leaders, we probably will never have to put our lives on the line for the sake of others. But nevertheless, we are called upon to be heroes in the sense that we we, as leaders, we are called upon to self-sacrifice for the sake of others. That is a huge and important component of true heroic leadership, okay? So, if you want to be a strong leader, you will have to embrace the hero within, okay? Whether in the small matters or in the bigger, larger, more important matters. So, to sum it all up, here's what a hero is. Number one, a hero, you can jot that down, by the way, okay? If I were you, I would just jot that down because it's really good stuff. Although, in the group, I think I'll, what I'll do is I'll probably add those studies that I write down before I actually give them to you. So I'll just put the studies as well in the documents in the group for those who join the group. So you can have it all written down for you if you join the group. If you don't join the group, well, that's really sad, actually. But if you don't join the group, you can still jot it down and get some good stuff out of it. So, heroes, always think of others first. A hero is always willing to sacrifice in small or great matters, even in life or death matters. A hero has strong morals, usually, and a strong sense of duty and honor. And finally, unlike a leader, and this is the biggest difference between a hero and a leader, a hero can act independently at times without being part of a team or without having any followers. So that's the biggest difference between a hero and a leader. It, if you guys buy the book, and I really recommend that you do because it's a great book, you will see I, I, there's a place in the book where I actually uh, demonstrate the different, uh, not the differences, but the similarities between a hero and a leader. And it's really amazing how many similarities there are, okay? So now we're gonna go to the leader. What does it mean to be a leader? So everybody loves a hero, but not everybody loves a good leader. You might be surprised to hear that. It's a fact. If you're a leader, not everybody will love you, even if you are a good leader. So, the thing is, 
Even though they might not love you, if you're a real true leader, they will respect you. So that's the difference between a, that's one of the differences between a hero, hero and a leader is a leader might not always be loved, but he will always be respected. Okay. And I didn't say that, by the way, that was a uh, general Norman Schwarzkopf. I, I don't really know how to pronounce his name. I think I got it. Norman Schwarzkopf. And he said this in one of the most memorable keynote speeches on leadership I have ever heard. So I highly recommend that you go on YouTube when you have the chance and check out the uh, General Norman Schwarzkopf keynote on leadership. It is truly, truly gold. You will get a lot from that keynote, okay? In the book, Captain America and Optimus Prime are the two most gifted leader or character characters that I, I, I portray or I, 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 um, I detail in the book, okay? They are the two characters that are all about leadership. Captain America and Optimus Prime are leaders first and foremost. Secondly, they're heroes and thirdly, they're warriors. They're all three, mind you, but their main strength is their leadership, okay? So, as I said before, there are many parallels that can be woven between a hero and a leader. I go through them in the book, but here are the key distinguishing characteristics of a leader. So you can jot those down. Number one, a leader inspires and influences people. Number two, a leader very simply has followers. There's an old African proverb that says, he who thinks he leads and has no one following is only taking a walk. That, that's really true, isn't it? So a leader has followers. Number three, and that might surprise some of you, but a real good and true leader serves others. That, that, that might sound contradictory to those of you who are not very familiar with studying leadership. But the best leaders out there are the best servant leaders. Okay. And I didn't invent that. If you read any good book on leadership, it talks about servanthood and servant leadership quite a bit. And I'm no exception in my book, in the chapter on Spider-Man, it's all consecrated to servant leadership. Okay. And fourthly, and this is a quote from my mentor, John Maxwell. A leader is someone who knows the way, who shows the way, and who goes the way. John Quincy Adams, who was an ancient, an older president of the United States, he said this. He said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, to learn more, to do more, and to become more, you are in fact a leader. And thirdly, and not least, we will now talk about the warrior. Unlike the hero who is loved by everybody and the leader who is not loved by everybody, but who is respected, the warrior doesn't care if nobody loves him. So that's the warrior for you. And in the book, I just brush over the warrior aspect. I don't go in detail. I just mentioned it a couple times, but I thought that for this teaching, I should really go a little bit more in detail about the warrior because after all, we're talking about superheroes. They're all warriors. They, they all fight all the time. And I'm talking physical fights, right? We fight in our daily lives, but we're not fighting physically most of the time anyway. So I think the warrior aspect, if you're going to lead like a superhero, is super important. So, uh, the warrior doesn't care if anybody loves him. He doesn't care about that. Okay. So there's a young, I'm just going to tell you a little story here that I found super. There was a young, uh, martial arts trainee who asked, he asked his master, he said, master, you teach me fighting, but you always talk about peace. How do you reconcile the two? And the master replied, he said, because it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. So 
let's go down. What are the characteristics of a warrior? Well, the warrior does what needs to be done, period. Okay, he doesn't focus on all the after effects of his actions most of the time. He just does what is absolutely necessary without worrying about the opinions of others or what his actions will have as a domino effect afterwards. He does what is needed right now. So a warrior acts in the thick of the moment. Number two, the warrior doesn't seek or need any accolades. He doesn't need that. He just goes and does his business. Number three, he doesn't need or seek followers. Now that doesn't mean that a warrior will not get followers. A, mo a warrior may very well have followers. Uh, I kind of like Braveheart in that, in that respect. And when you see it, Braveheart, what, he just he was all warrior. When he first acted, when he first slit the throat of the the guy who was hurting his, who killed his wife. He was just acting out of pa sheer passion. And that is a warrior for you. And his passion led to him having followers and building an army. But he would have done it alone anyway. I mean, whether he was followed or not, he would have kept going until he would have died. That was Braveheart for you, right? That's the movie, if we remember correctly. So the warrior isn't about style. He's not about grace, okay? He's all about one thing and one thing alone. He's all about results. The warrior only cares about the results. What's in front of him right here, right now, and the results that he needs to get, okay? And lastly, the warrior is the in-between person, okay? So he's the one who puts himself between the threat and those or the things, because it can be things also he's trying to protect. So he's the in-between man who's going to stand between the threat and those he's trying to protect. So in the book, obviously, when I talk warrior, Wolverine comes to mind. Uh, I really like Wolverine. Uh, the chapter is probably the funniest chapter in the book. But he's all warrior. I mean, he just wants to get those results. He doesn't really care if he pleases the crowd. He doesn't care if he gets accolades. He's just going to get the job done and he's all about the results. Okay, and to some degree, I think Batman also fits that build, but, but Batman has a, a, a sense of honor that Wolverine lacks, but he, he still fits the warrior build a lot. Actually, Batman, I think, just a parenthesis here, Batman really fits all three. Uh, if you look at uh, the hero, if you look at the leader, and if you look at the warrior, Batman fits the bill in all three categories pretty well. But there are two, de uh, two others who are definitely warriors, that I want to talk about. There's a story in a comic book I have at home, in this comic book here, that dates from the 90s. It's Green Lantern comic book, in which uh, they're battling a guy, the guy's name is Major Force, and to be blunt, he's a real jerk. He killed Green Lantern's girlfriend, and in the comic, he also kills the brother of uh, the uh, Guy Gardner. His name is Guy Gardner. He's also a Green Lantern, and he killed his brother right in the comic. And Green Lantern has him in a pretty much a, sh a choke hold, and he's about to deliver the killing blow. And at the last second, he says, "I can't, I just can't." And he he drops his green sword. He had like he had made a sword with his ring. He drops the sword, and Guy Gardner, who also is a is a Green Lantern. And if anybody, any one of you does, don't know Green Lan uh, Guy Gardner, he's a lot like Wolverine. He's very much a rebel at heart, all warrior, rough around the edges. And Guy Gardner says, this guy just killed my brother. He killed your girlfriend. And how many others did he kill that we don't know about? He just goes at it. He makes a sword, plock, cuts his neck, it's over. And that's, that was in comic. I was, I was shocked because you don't see stuff like that in comics, especially back in the 90s. Today, the comics have gotten a lot more violent. But back in the day, it was very rare to see killings in comics. Not that rare, but it was kind of rare. Anyway, so I was kind of in shock. And it's really interesting because at the end, when all is said and done, here they are in their civilian clothes. And you have Guy Gardner and Green Lantern. They're talking together. And they, at the same time, they ask the question, Guy Gardner asks, uh, Greenlander says, why didn't you do it? And 
Green Lantern asks Guy Gardner, he says, why did you do it? And you know what he says? Guy Gardner says this, he says, face it, kid. Some of us are meant to be heroes and some of us were meant to be warriors. I loved it. I mean, I, I read that, I was maybe, I'm, I was in my early 20s. And I read that, I was like, oh, that resonated with my heart so good. Of course, at the time, I, I perceived myself to be a hero. Um, I'm a Christian. Uh, I'm a guy with a strong sense of honor, values, and stuff like that. So I really resonated with the hero part, but I understood very at a very deep level the warrior aspect as well, and it really resonated with me. And ever since then, now I'm 42 years old. That was about 20 years ago. Ever since then, life has brought its share of challenges, of moments where I had to be a warrior. And what does it mean to be a warrior? Well, it means to be able to make those tough, sometimes even ruthless decisions. And that can happen with your family, that can happen with your friends, that can happen, it, it, I mean, if, if you're a leader, it doesn't mean you're a leader of necessarily a, a big corporation or you're a leader in a company. I mean, leadership, like I, I spoke last time, is organic, it's, it begins at home. So those tough decisions can be made on a daily basis in pretty much any situation. Of course, these people who are in charge of a lot of people who, who run major corporations, they make decisions that affect many more lives and, and those are even tougher to make. But uh, I, it really resonated with me. And there's another story I want to talk to you about, uh, another warrior in the comic book realm, and that might surprise some of you, Wonder Woman. There's a story about Wonder Woman that I absolutely loved and I put it in the book. I'm gonna share it with you here today. It's, uh, it's a story about Maxwell Lord, who is a ruthless businessman, very evil and wicked. And in that story arc, he mind controls Superman to do his bidding. And he is willing to go to any length to get whatever he wants to do accomplished. And now keep in mind, he's got probably the most powerful weapon in his under his mind control, Superman. Superman can do pretty much anything. So. In the ensuing conflict, Wonder Woman steps up and wants to stop, obviously, Superman from doing Maxwell Lord's bidding, so they end up fighting a lot. And uh, let's just say it was a very interesting fight. For you comic book fans out there, that is a super issue when they go head-to-head, uh, -head, Wonder Woman and Superman. Uh, I won't tell you who wins. <laughs> you, you might have a pretty good guess already. But also, in the process, Batman was, uh, was threatened. His life was severely threatened by the mind control Superman. So Wonder Woman is there. She's the only one standing up to this huge threat because who knows how many innocents this crazy Maxwell Lord guy could get killed because he's, controlling, he's mind controlling Superman. And she comes to a point during the fight where she confronts Maxwell Lord and he basically makes it very clear that only death will stop him. And this is the shocker. This is the moment that got everybody shocked in the comic book community, if you're a fan. Wonder Woman looks him straight in the eyes. She grabs his head, she holds it, looks him straight in the eyes, and she just goes like, snap! She snaps the guy's neck. He falls <laughs> dead. And during that scene, Superman is right there, and he, he, he's, he witnesses the scene because he snaps out of it when Maxwell Lord falls dead. Superman's not under mind control and he is absolutely flabbergasted. What did she do? I mean, and that's when you see that the character of Wonder Woman is all warrior. She was raised on, on an island full of warrior women. She was raised to be a warrior from her youth. And at that very moment, the warrior comes out. She is like, I'm not going to stand for this. I am just going to do what is necessary. I'm going to stop that madman because too many lives are at stake. And she did it. So that's the warrior for you. And that action contributed to the disbandment, the temporary disbandment, I must say, of the Justice League. So Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman, both Batman and Superman disapproved of Wonder Woman's actions at the time. I, for one, I don't want to go in a debate, uh, in a deba an ethics debate here, but I, for one, actually approved of her actions. 
of course, some of you people out there might be like, yeah, but the Bible says thou shalt not kill. Actually, that is a mistranslation, and I don't want to go into a theological stuff here. There are some versions who translate it correctly by thou shalt not murder. Okay, and if it, if it was thou shalt not kill, seriously, do you think that God would have sent the Israelites through war after war after war in the Old Testament? Think about it. Do you think God would have wanted his commandment to be contravened by his own people by sending them to do stuff that he said they shouldn't do? Obviously not. So it's a mistranslation. It's actually thou shalt not murder. And it, in the, um, the New King James Version, I think, that's the version I think, they have it right. They translated it by thou shalt not murder. But I, I don't want to go into that just now. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty much done, I think, with the warrior thing. I told you the Wonder Woman story. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you can be, you can choose to be a very good leader by just following the guidelines that make up a good leader. You can just work on your leadership and you could be an excellent leader. But if you're going to be a super leader, like if you're going to really lead like a superhero, you need to implement the self-sacrificial aspect of the hero or the superhero. And you also need to implement the, uh, the warrior spirit of the warrior, that ability to make ruthless decisions when they need to be made. And that's tough. If anybody's made a real ruthless, difficult decision, it stays with you for the rest of your life, okay? But it takes, it takes guts. It takes a warrior spirit. So, a warrior spirit will increase your leadership skills. And uh, another thing is a warrior spirit, if you are a warrior, if you implement that in your leadership, it will make you get some scars you will get some scars in the process. It's normal, but always tell yourself this, your scars serve as a reminder that whatever tried to kill you failed. Another thing, I wanna leave you today with a final thought to ponder, okay? It is taken from an old writing from antiquity. And it says this, I thought it was very profound. The society that separates its scholars from its warriors will have its thinking done by cowards and its fighting done by fools. This was said by Thucydides. Thucydides, I think I got it. So that is something to ponder here. I mean, uh, we live in a, in a world where everything is compartmented, right? We, uh, we're told to be one or the other. But you, if you're going to lead like a superhero, you have to be, at times you will need to be all three. At times you will have to be only one. But they are definitely important, not only to differentiate, but to blend together as you learn to lead like a superhero. So I'm all done here. I am all done exposing the difference between a hero, a leader, and a warrior. I wish you guys a super Saturday. And if you haven't joined the group, don't forget to join the group, the Facebook group. So you just go to Facebook groups, lead like a superhero. I will put in, like I said before at the beginning of this video, I will put in some uh, sample chapters, a couple of sample chapters, and I am working on a secret chapter that is not in the book. So this is only for group members. So those just send a request to join the group. I will uh, add you to the group and then that's where you can really get the good stuff. Okay guys. So. Uh, I'm all done here. I wish you a super Saturday. May God richly bless you as you work your leadership skills and as you keep trying to implement them in your families, in your communities, in your workplace, in your churches, or in your basic, in your own companies if you're uh, entrepreneurs. God bless you all. Bye bye.